Welcome to Sioux Nation On Location. I'm Mandy Thomas, nutritionist for Sioux Nation Ag Center, and we're here to talk about sheep and goat production today. Now, sheep and goat production can be really rewarding if things go well and really depressing if things do not go well. So we're gonna talk about some of the common issues there are in sheep and goat production. Now, it's really common in our region to dry lot sheep and goats, and a lot of that has to do with our prime crop ground not being used for pasture. And also, it's easier to manage parasite infestation on dry lot versus having animals out on pasture. So one of the major issues we see is not giving enough space to your sheep and goats. And as a nutritionist, I can say, you never have enough feed space and you never have enough water space. So if you can overdo the feed space and water space and offer plenty of space for loafing for the animals, you'll be good to go. While sheep are not as bad about fencing as goats are, fencing is a really important part of sheep and goat production. These welded wire fences hold up better than any of the other type of fencing that we found. Now, electric fencing is always a, a great choice too, but you have to remember that you need high powered fencing. If it is not very hot, they will bust through it. Ask me how I know. Shelter is important. Now it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can be as simple as a hoop barn, a three-sided shed, or any other number of housing options that you could put together in your backyard. But shelter is probably one of the most important things that you can give a sheep or goat because no matter how hardy they are, the weather is not their friend. A lot of times producers launch into sheep and goats when they hear of a flock or herd that's for sale at a great price and they jump on it without realizing the amount of work that goes into sheep or goats. Um, and a lot of that depends on what your goals are for your operation. When we talk about sheep, um, the main thing these days is do you want wool sheep or do you want hair sheep? And the one negative I would say for the wool sheep is that shearers are getting harder to find and schedule. So that's where the hair sheep are great. You don't have to shear them. They naturally shed or should naturally shed their hair. Uh, but some of the other things to think about when you're thinking about breeds would be, do you want out of season breeding? Do you want in season breeding? What's your, what's your final market? Are we going for terminal animals? Are we going for maternal animals? Uh, what kind of feed situation do you have? Are you looking at dry lotting or raising on pasture? So do you, can you handle multiples versus singles? Are you on rangeland? Are you on good grassland or you know, these are just some of the things that you need to think about, um, especially if you're going to be lambing in the heart of winter in our region would be another management thing to think about. And that has been some of the interest in some of these uh, out of season breeders. So one topic that could, is going to be its own video soon will be lambing preparation. So for now, I'll just suffice it to say on our website, there is a lambing and kidding checklist. So go to Sioux Nation Ag dot com and look for our lambing and kidding checklist and watch back for a later video. If your thought of raising sheep or goats includes throwing some feed at them and, and not coming to see them again for a couple months, you'll be sorely disappointed. Unfortunately, small ruminant production requires quite a bit of time spent maintaining and addressing the needs of the flock. Now, depending on whether you're doing sheep or goats, there may be some shearing involved. There's always hoof trimming and vaccinating and deworming that needs to be done though. So just feeding them and leaving them is probably not going to benefit you. Not all feed is created equal. Supplementation will change by the time of year, which depends on the quality of the feed that you have. Sometimes it can be as simple as an inexpensive mineral supplement. Sometimes you'll need to go a little further. You might be short on protein or energy. It takes a special kind of person to raise sheep and goats. So if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Thank you for joining me today for Sioux Nation On Location. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to our nutritionist, veterinarians, field consultants, and our store staff.